my little checklist of who's joining us as a committee. Um, and I really want to just take the time to say thank you to all the committee members that join us uh, week in and week out. Um, I was going back uh, through my notes and uh, seeing that we've been meeting since right after uh, Thanksgiving uh, from the agendas that I've kind of looked back and then I compiled and it just says something that the committee members that have been here every single week um, that your commitment is very admirable and very much appreciated. I, I know we have a big task. Um, we do have some agenda items today that we need to kind of get clarity on with everything. And then with that, um, I'm gonna start off, um, Mr. Clifton um, had his hand raised, so I'm gonna turn it <laughs> over to him. Yeah, and I was frantically trying to lower my hand because it was totally inadvertent and I couldn't do it. And I have to suspect, uh, Chair Odegaard, that somewhere our city clerk is in control of my computer because she does that and she plays tricks on me all the time. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, hope you're staying safe and warm. It's great to see the snow. There's been a lot of it lately. Um, and I do not have introductions to make this time. I might turn it over to uh, our deputy city manager, Shannon Anderson, and I think she can maybe, Shannon, uh, reintroduce our excellent consultant team to the group and get on with today's agenda, if that's okay. Absolutely sounds terrific. Um, I apologize, I'm a little dark today. I've got some windows behind me that changed the color, but uh, that's okay. Um, I wanna introduce our new point team. I'm gonna start with Mary, cause on my screen, she's up at the top right. That's Mary Raleigh. Um, again, with new point, uh, we've got Steve Lynn, uh, also with new point and Meredith Ford. Um, so these are our team of experts um, that we've hired to help us through uh, this particular bond uh, measure project. So thanks to the three of you for being at each of these meetings and for working with us in between. Um, our chat is helping me with the lighting in the room. So now you can see me. <laughs> uh, I hope you all are having a great day. Our first item that we have for you today is the timeline. Uh, so I will open that up and everyone can see it. It just came up. Great. Um, so what we're going to be focusing on as we look at this, this is our engagement timeline, and we've added some key components for our committee members as well. They're identified in blue off to the left here. And so that's what I'll be focusing on today. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so you can see it on your screen. Um, so the first is uh, we're going to share the community survey with the citizen bond committee members. Um, we're actually going to go over an outline with you today. Uh, then once the survey itself is finalized, we'll be sharing that document with you uh, via email. So that is right around the corner. Um, we are going to be sending out postcards to our residents via mail. Um, this is going to invite them to participate in the community bond survey. Uh, by providing them with a link. Um, this will be going out on March 17th. Um, that will coordinate with the date that the survey opens. So folks will be able to start uh, providing their input uh, via the survey on the 17th of March. Um, they'll have two weeks then to provide input and that'll be through March 31st. In addition to having this online, we're also going to have paper copies that will be available at our two libraries, downtown in the East uh, Flagstaff location, as well as City Hall. And so individuals who wish to have uh, paper surveys can pick them up and leave them at those locations and they can be included. Uh, then the next couple of points that we'd like to go over um, is that new point uh, will work to share the community survey results uh, with this committee on April 14th. Um, and they're going to talk about some things that they're going to do to engage you in those survey questions prior to that date as well um, in an agenda item here later today. Um, then, as we know, we've been talking about a roadshow. This is the opportunity for us to um, talk about what we've learned, what are the various bond projects. Um, we have about five weeks, if I remember correctly, it starts on April 18th, um, goes through May 9th. And so we'll talk more about that as we get closer. Um, we'll have our final recommendations uh, ready in May. And of course, 
Um, we're going to go over that in more detail as we talk about our recommendations handout. So that's what I have to share with you on our schedule for today. Um, certainly happy to answer any questions the committee members might have uh, before we move on to our next agenda item. Uh, go ahead, uh, Vice Chair White. Thanks, Shannon. How um, are we alerting the members of the public that uh, that this bond, that this survey is out there and uh, and where they can access it? Great question. Thank you. Um, we're going to be mailing uh, a postcard to each residential address in the city of Flagstaff limits. Um, we will be advertising um, on. Uh, print ads, so Arizona Daily Sun will be advertising on social media. There will be information on the Citizen Bond Committee webpage, um, which we've just uh, renamed to Go Bonds. Um, so it will be uh, in print advertising as well as on social media. In addition to those postcards. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh uh, we do have a, a question by one of the committee members, uh, Mr. Ghetto. You want to go ahead and ask your questions? Sure. Yes, thanks, Chair Odegaard. Uh, I was just wondering how we're going to measure success in terms of responses. Is there a statistically significant number we're looking for before we can make judgments as to how our community sees things? Thank another you. another great question, Ron. I'm going to ask if I can call a friend and see if Mary, uh, Steve, or Meredith could maybe talk about the statistical uh, component of this particular survey. Do you want me to take that one, Steve? Yeah, go ahead, Mary. Um, what we're planning to do is uh, we have the postcard that will go out to every um, residential address that we have that you all have supplied the city. Um, we will also be promoting it through other ways with a link. So we're trying to get as many people as possible. What we will do then, we will have however many we get total responses, have basic data on that, uh, but we're going to pull from that a random sample of about 600 which we will then match to the demographics of the city residents, you know, the typical age, um, gender, et cetera, ethnicity, um, and that we will run cross tabs and more detailed analysis on. So it will be a random sample, but you'll also be able to see what the universe said in terms of um, all the responses that we get. And I don't know, Steve, if you want to add anything. No, just that just that uh, picking that sample out of the responses and we're basing this on a prior survey that was done using the same methodology. And I believe if I'm not mistaken, Shannon, I think there were around 2000 responses and from that they culled about a 600 uh, in uh, random sample. And so we're hoping to do the same thing. Um, it gives us plenty of opportunity to match the demographics of the respondents to the demographics of the community so that we have a fairly uh, good cross section and and understand uh, how the residents of Flagstaff are feeling. Um, I'll go, uh, Mr. Ghetto, did, do you have, feel like your, your answer was, yes. uh, question was That's answered? Good, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I, I do. I just wanna make sure that there's just not one skewed opinion in our community that ends up permeating the data and in fact doesn't necessarily re represent the entire community. I think you understand that and I think the response suggests that we'll get through that. Thank you. That's our plan. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Ghetto. Uh, Mr. Moore, committee member. Uh, thank you. Um, just really quick, do does the committee itself have any role in the this engagement plan as far as the road show or anything like that, or is that all just city staff that does those events? So Tad, um, I'll I'll provide my opinion. And again, I would invite New Point or other city staff to, to chime in as well. Um, I think having a good combination of committee members um, and city staff uh, to be able to go and talk about uh, what we've been working on, where we are in process, um, 
and and the high level as far as the presentations, what the projects are and where folks can find that information uh, could be incredibly valuable. I think we've got some time to determine who would be willing to participate in that process, um, identify who we want to go talk to and potential dates. Any other thoughts that we'd like to add? Um, and then I'm going to follow up that. So, Ms. Anderson, you'll keep the committee well informed of those dates and locations and um, where they're at. So if any of us want to go and engage the community, uh, we'll have that opportunity. Yes, we'll actually work with the committee to identify um, who we would like to include in that roadshow as well. So that way we're reaching out to those we think are most important to share the information. Okay, one uh, thing, Shannon, you. that one, one thing I would add um, just so that the committee members are are all aware un, until the mayor and council actually set this for uh, for uh, a, an election, which they will do in June. Um, we really are not in a position to advocate at this point. We're in a position to inform. And so as you go out on the roadshow, if you're with city staff, you can explain the projects. You can certainly explain the benefits of the projects. But we want to be able to stop short of saying vote yes on bond A, B, C, or D, uh, because we just can't do that until an election's been called. And at that point, city staff can no longer advocate but citizens after that point certainly can form their own support committee to support the bonds and hope uh, to get them all approved by the voters. Uh, yeah, very well uh, spoken, Mr. Lynn, uh, about that, uh, you know, line of concerning information and advocacy. Um, and, and, there, and there's definitely a line that we have to be all aware of in that. Um, you know, my own personal experience, you know, I, you know, I like getting in the community and talking to the residents um, and providing that information and hearing any concerns they might have or anything, you know, that will help um, with us um, concerning a, a decision of whatever that may be here in the future. Um, you know, I cannot stress how important it is to really, you know, talk to um, the community members, whether it's family, neighbors, uh, co-workers, and then also on these roadshows, um, be able to participate if you can and, and talking to the public and and providing that information. And um, so when something does happen, less of that misinformation will happen at a later point. Uh, Ms. Hander, I had a question, but I think you might be answering that question, you know, as far as the committee itself, um, um, you know, we have a couple of tours uh, coming up concerning uh, city facilities, um, concerning um, uh, stormwater and waste, wastewater, uh, most uh, wastewater um, facilities here in the next couple of weeks. And then you'll give us here probably shortly, uh, you know, what's expected uh, timeline uh, for the committee is are we meeting in April or how, you know how are we as a committee going to you know kind of keep moving forward I guess. Yeah um, thank you Chair Odegaard we'd like to be able to present um, these three uh, documents to you to talk about just the overall timeline uh, the survey and then the um, how we're going to suggest that we get to some recommendations. Um, and then from there, we'd like in from this committee as to how often you'd like to meet. Uh, based on the timelines you'll see in these next couple of agenda items, we're suggesting April 7th and April 14th. Um, but after that, it's really up to you as to how often you'd like to get together to discuss um, the various uh, bond projects um, and working on prioritizing that for the presentation uh, to council in June. OK, um, that's great. And I'll let you continue with the agenda items then. Thank you. Great. Since there's no other questions on this one, I'll go ahead and stop sharing. Our next agenda item is the community bond survey. Uh, as I mentioned, I do have an outline that we're going to walk through today. 
um, so we know what to expect. And then uh, the actual survey will be sent out uh, once it's finalized over the next couple of days. But give me just a moment to get to the right. Sorry, for some reason it's not showing up on my. See it there. Here we go. Can everyone see that okay? Uh, yes, Miss Anderson. Great. Um, so this community bond survey uh, will be presenting both the city uh, a Flagstaff logo as well as the bond logo that's been created at the top of the document. Uh, the survey will be offered both in English and, is, and in Spanish. Um, as I shared earlier, it will be an online survey, but paper copies will be available at the libraries as well as City Hall. Uh, to give a brief introduction, um, again, we've contracted with New Point, um, and they are an independent Arizona market research firm. And so they're going to help us conduct this survey uh, to determine how folks feel about the public improvement projects we've been discussing um, since December. Um, and again, uh, this would be for the November 2022 election. Uh, we estimate that it would take an individual, an individual about 10 minutes to complete the survey. Um, and of course, we very much appreciate uh, their feedback. Uh, the survey will start with a section that focuses on eligibility um, as well as history. It'll ask four questions to try and get a sense of, is this an individual that lives within our city limits? Um, and are they registered to vote? Are they planning to vote in November? And which elections they've participated in um, over the past few years? So this gives us a good sense as to um, how our voters feel versus those who are residents but may not vote. Um, we'll get both sets of data after we uh, receive the survey responses. So I like to think of this survey as a funnel. Um, the, the survey really starts with really broad questions uh, that talks about the potential bond measures. And it asks the survey uh, respondents what's in very important, somewhat important, somewhat unimportant and not important at all. Um, and it focuses on our four areas, the public safety infrastructure, the stormwater and wastewater infrastructure, energy efficient buildings and transportation, which we've been referring to as climate action and housing. Um, so these will be the four areas that we focus on throughout the survey, um, but it's important to note that they're going to be randomized. So they're not always going to show public safety first. Um, sometimes it might be public safety. Sometimes it might be energy efficient buildings and transportation. Um, that's going to vary throughout the survey. And so at this big part of the funnel, um, it asks, now that you've rated the importance of each of the bond measures, please choose which one's most important. So it's going to ask them to select one. Um, and then it's going to ask them how likely they'd be to vote for that bond measure. Um, definitely, maybe, no, or they're not sure yet at this point. And so as we move down that funnel, we get into a more detailed description of projects within each of the bond measure categories. And so what this means is um, the different things that we've been talking about in public safety infrastructure, like the radio towers, uh, as well as the fire trucks and the storage. Um, it's going to give a brief description of each of those components. And the respondents asked at give their opinion on, again, what's very important, somewhat important, someone unimportant, and then not at all important. And we finish this section by asking um, which one, which one bond measure category is particularly important to them. And so again, we're continuing to go down our funnel. Um, we're going to provide uh, prescription description project descriptions of all of these bond projects um, and we're going to ask them now that you have more information because you've read about each of these bond measures in more detail how likely would you to be to vote for the bond measure um, 
and then it'll ask definitely, maybe, no, and I'm not sure. Um, again, focusing on those four areas uh, that you see below here, public safety, stormwater, wastewater, energy efficient buildings and transportation and housing. And so at the very end of the survey, there's a couple of questions that are related to um, how do they hear or to learn about topics in our community? Um, and then we move into respondent demographics. Um, the point of the communication platforms is just to give us an indication where do people hear about things? We want to be sure that we're using um, any kind of advertising dollars um, wisely. And so this lets us know where we want to focus those efforts in the engagement plan that we were talking about earlier today. And then the respondent demographics um, tells us about the individual. Uh, obviously, this information is confidential. Uh, we don't look at associating uh, their responses with their individual um, responses to the questions in any way, shape or form. And they don't have to answer these questions in order to be able to submit their survey. Um, and so there's about a handful, what, six or seven questions here. Um, how many years have you lived in the Flagstaff area? In which area of Flagstaff do you live? In this particular question, what we've done is we've taken um, the six kind of neighborhood areas uh, that we use for water services. Um, we've defined them so folks can say, um, oh, I live um, in South Flagstaff and, and their neighborhood would be listed in that particular um, area of our community. Uh, we also ask for folks to indicate their gender, their age group, their race, their ethnicity, um, their highest level of education, and a couple more here, um, their total combined annual household income, uh, and which politically, which political party are they most likely to agree with or vote for? Um, so that again is the very last part of the survey. Um, it just gives us an idea um, so that when we're trying to match um, the makeup of our community that we're pulling uh, the survey responses that are statistically important uh, as Mary and Steve reviewed with us earlier. Um, so again, happy to answer any questions on uh, the community bond survey. Um, I certainly might have to call a friend on this one as well because I'm not the expert here, but luckily we've got um, our new point friends with us on the line. OK, um, thank you, Miss Anderson and. And I do have a couple of hands raised. Um, I'll start with uh, Mr. Gettle uh, first, one of the committee members. So go ahead. Thank you. Um, just a couple of quick questions. You can answer them at the end. Uh, I assume this is a drop down screen questionnaire. Um, I didn't know. Uh, so we're going to offer we're going to show the bond, the broad bond categories and then components that can be judged. And my last question is before the survey even begins, is there an introduction with a definition of what a bond is, what it means to you, the citizen, how many of them we have outstanding already? And to try and personalize and 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 really educate, because I think that's super important here. Otherwise, nobody wants a bond. There's nothing attractive about a bond. Thank you very much. Yeah, so um, Ron, I'm going to kind of take your questions in order. Um, the drop down menus, um, Mary, Steve or Meredith, can you uh, talk about um, how this will look online? Are they drop down menus? Are they multiple choice and you select the dials? If you could talk a little bit about that. Depending on the question, um, typically the on the rating of um, you know, how strongly they support that kind of thing they click on a button going across because it'll be online. On the paper, they can they can check that off. Uh, for example, on the neighborhoods, that will be a drop down and they can pick uh, where they, they, they will pick the, the broad sections, but there will be a drop down for them where they can see what the neighborhoods are within that broad section like South Flagstaff. OK, so then the next question was, um, does this include uh, the bond 
uh, measure categories, and then it talks about the projects. That is exactly how um, this survey uh, is created. It really focuses on the um, bond measure categories or topics. Um, so it gives just a brief description of what's included in public safety infrastructure or in housing. Um, and it asks them for their opinion there, and then it gets into saying, all right, well, now here's housing and here's all the specific bond projects that are within that housing. Which one of these, you know, how do you rate these? Um, and it'll ask them now that you have more information, how does it, how would you feel about um, these uh, bond measures and projects at this point? So that's why I say it's kind of like a funnel. We're trying to get more and more specific um, as we continue to ask questions really broad in the beginning and then talking about the specific projects um, there at the end. And then I think the last question that you asked Ron um, was, do we have information about a definition of a bond? Um, what are they? What are they used for? Um, I think the next part was how many um, are outstanding, and I think that's probably getting to how much capacity we have. Um, we do talk briefly in the survey about the fact that uh, bonds are used for public improvements, public infrastructure, uh, but we don't get into more details than that. Um, but we do have um, a couple of things that are happening at the same time. Um, and that is a video um, that our public affairs team has helped us record with our very own Rick Tatter uh, talking about geo bonds. Um, so folks will have that information. We also have social media posts um, that are uh, informing them about that video and also about our citizen bond committee website so folks can go and learn uh, more information about this geo bond. Um, so the information is certainly out there. Um, we do a little bit in the survey, but not a whole lot because we wanted to be careful that we didn't create too long of a document that folks would lose interest or not be willing to fill out. Um, certainly, if there's any other additions, uh, New Point or city staff would like to add on on that particular item, that would be helpful. So Shannon, I think you covered it fairly well. And, and um, to your question, Mr. Kittrow, um, if if you go into too much detail about the intricacies of a bond, you're likely to prejudice the responses in a way that we'd prefer not to have happen. I don't I don't want respondents to get hung up on how much capacity the city has or what they've retired so far or so uh, so forth, because that will all come out when the pamphlet goes out to um, to voters before the election and whatever campaign the citizens group uses to inform voters of where the city is and how how this particular bond measure or series of bond measures uh, will impact the city. Uh, there will be absolute truth in in uh, in uh, understanding if the bonds were to be passed what impact it would have on the secondary property tax and, and what it would mean to, to voters if they were to vote yes. All of that information will be pushed out uh, prior to the election. Excellent response. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you everyone. Um, Mr. Byer, um, one of the committee members, go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I guess a couple of things that struck me during this uh, overview here is just the word like uh, energy efficient building and transportation, and we've called that climate action. It just strikes me as it could be important, those first two words could influence, or the first little phrase could influence how people respond. I'm no expert in marketing, but maybe we wanna think about what we call them, um, just to keep, encourage people to have an open mind, you know, so maybe that's just an, an observation. Again, I don't, I'm no expertise in that. And I guess the, the second question relate, you know, it, it's a time estimated 10 minutes. Well, if they're really gonna click for additional information and learn something, uh, that's probably not realistic. And, and perhaps we should do a few trial runs, maybe five trial runs and give them a more realistic estimate of how much, especially that part of looking up additional information um, 
would require, or maybe you shouldn't do that. Uh, maybe those are kind of questions in terms of how this is presented, and I'll I'll go offline uh, for the response. No, it, it's a great question, and uh, just to be clear, um, the ability to go to a, a variety of websites and get additional information, or to look at the videos, is not part of the survey, and we don't expect people to to go from the survey to those uh, other points, uh, other possible sources, unless they are aware of them and want to do that either first before they take the survey, uh, but it's not included in the survey. Uh, our timing of the 10 minutes is if you just answer the questions in the order that they're presented, it's about a 10 minute uh, journey. Uh, and any other uh, uh, information you might glean from any of the other sources would be either before or after the survey was taken. We can add, you know, and say should take you no more than 15 minutes, um, but we we typically base the time that it takes on the number of questions uh, that historically we've seen. So if if you think people won't believe that, we can add a little time to it. That's that's not a problem at all. And then Jenny, if I could invite you to speak to the energy efficient buildings and transportation and how we landed on that um, more detailed description than climate action. Of course, I would be happy to and I want to defer to Nicole, who I believe is also on the call. Um, sorry, I thought she had to leave at 430. So no, I that's apologize. right. She does. So I, oh, yeah, I, it wasn't. It yeah, was, I, go ahead, Nicole. <laughs> I am still here. I'm uh, actually making my way over to NAU to uh, lecture. So uh, thank you. And Jenny, yeah, I'll hand this off in a sec. But we, you know, in looking at uh, bonds that have been issued in other communities and just comments about how broad climate action is as a term, the intent was to refine the focus of the particular projects. An alternative opportunity or consideration could be that we call it climate action hyphen energy efficient buildings and transportation. But the idea here is that climate action is so broad and it is not just these projects that have been proposed through this bond. Um, we welcome any feedback from, from the committee on that and are happy to um, entertain comments and, and, and incorporate those into the final survey. All right, well, thank you. I guess my my goal is that every one of these passes, <laughs> but I don't I'm no expert in what people are going to like best. <laughs> but uh, thank you. OK, uh, thank you. And I know our city manager has his hand raised and maybe could add to the discussion. So go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, more of a commentary, I think. We're at a, a juncture where you know the survey is going to need to go out. Uh, we vetted it at the staff level. We're uh, presenting it to you, you know, to share information. But but we are past the point of of redrafting and redrafting. But I do want to uh, give everybody some level of comfort here. Um, the survey, as Steve and his team have represented, will inform future discussions by this committee, and it is very deliberately written to be. Uh, you know, non-influential, non uh, of a non-advocacy nature, um, very almost generic, but with enough information to give the responders to the survey, uh, you know, a basis to formulate good, good responses. Advocacy and details and even nomenclature, you, you know, we'll have the opportunity to address those things as time marches on later in this process, you know, we'll be talking about things like information pamphlets and public outreach. And, and I think that is where now we at the staff level, as as the, the chair mentioned early on, uh, we have limitations as to how how much we can advocate uh, at all on these things. Our, our role as a general comment is to inform, um, but there will be opportunities for advocacy um, and there'll be opportunities to um, use different terms and to clarify and to take things to much greater depth uh, than what we're uh, endeavoring to do with this survey. So I just wanted to share that overall comment. Thank you, Chair. 
Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Clifton. Uh, before I go on to uh, Vice Chair White, I saw Mr. Uh, Moore, one of the committee members, did have his hand raised. Uh, Mr. Moore, did you get an uh, answer to your question you may have? Uh, yes, it was actually the exact same question that Paul had, and you guys have all answered it smashingly. Thank you. All right, well, thank you, Mr. Moore. Okay, uh, Vice Chair White, go ahead. Thanks, I appreciate it. Um, Shannon, can you move the, um, the um, slide up? to section two. Okay, to part D, in which of the following elections did you participate in? What do you intend to show there? Um, and how do you intend to get people to answer? Are you gonna give them multiple choice for the last elections that we had, both um, for candidates and or bond issues? Are you just gonna restrict it to bond issues and uh, and um, how far back you're going to go? How do you, that uh, that struck me as being something that would be hard to answer um, unless you had multiple choice out there, and or um, just uh, just very very um, a lot a lot of possibilities to uh, to answer. Um, and I and I think we I want I want to do the same question kind of for the number of issues. So so. First of all, give me what you th what you're thinking is there. Uh, um, let, let, go let ahead, me work Steve. On that one, if I may, yep. uh, there will be a, there will be a, a drop down menu there with a, a listing of of former elections. And what we're trying to get at is we're trying to trying to get at whether or not the respondent to that particular survey is a frequent voter or someone who doesn't vote much in elections. So what we're going okay. to list are the last uh, the last few elections that they had an opportunity to vote in to see whether or not they they are a frequent voter or or a casual voter. And and we'll we'll make a distinction between the two. OK, so if uh, if you're doing that on online, a drop down would be something you could click on and uh, and it would go down and show what the last five elections. What do you do for a paper um, a paper survey? You simply list them and have them choose the ones that they were involved in. OK, so let's go. Let's take that same thought and go down to the issues. Um, everything that we saw. Um, yeah, I guess five is category five is what we're talking about, but maybe not. Um, it may be in three. Um, anyway, but but here here's here's my point. My point is there's a ton of issues, and uh, and presentations. I mean, we saw on on sustainability alone, we saw 84 slides, and so um, and I know that some of those are explanations that were good for us, but uh, but for the general public, are you going to list every issue? We're going to list projects. And these are projects that are part of the packages that the staff has put together that will that will ultimately be in one of the items on the ballot. And yeah, so what what you right. received. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I said issues. I meant um, projects because just the list of projects alone is going to be um, somewhat daunting. Well, actually, it's not that bad. Because really? it's packaged, because it, it, and what the staff has done is is put groups of those projects together in a package um, that we're able to convey to the public fairly easily. And uh, the presentation that you received from all of the staff was a contextual presentation. So they 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 gave you background and history. They gave you uh, what their recommendations are. They give you rationale for each one. And again, all of that information or a lot of that information will be presented uh, later on to the public. Here, we just want to we want to tick people uh, to to react to a type of project that is uh, contained within the package and to see how they feel about those things to give us a sense of which are more important, which are more popular and which will uh, give us a, uh, the best chance of passage. So, so I don't speak for the 19 of us. I speak for me, but I'd like to see what you have in mind. Um, and uh, and because I, 
because I have a, a sense that it's going to be uh, long and time consuming. Number one. Number two, um, I guess I'd like to suggest that uh, that you put either a link in there somehow to the the minutes of our meetings um, and then someone who wants to dig can dig further. Again, we're trying not to prejudice yeah. the answers and any what? additional information that we give will will modify the answers in terms of what we're looking for. This is an explanation, not a complete description of everything that was talked about. So uh, the purpose of this survey is to help you ultimately make your choices as to which things will go into the package. Uh, when we, a little bit later in the presentation today, uh, we're going to ask you, the committee, to answer some of these same questions. So you will get a chance to look at the same survey information and, and your, your answers will be available to everybody on the committee and then you'll be able to compare your answers with the answers of the public to see if there's any congruency or or a difference of opinion. Okay, yeah, I'm just dying to see how it's going to be presented. Thanks. I'm done. Okay, um, thank you. Um, I'm going to go in the chat box and I saw a um, couple comments and, and maybe a question too. Um, I'd like to start with committee member, um, Ms. Jefferson. Um, I know, I'm not sure if it's a comment or maybe a question and I'm glad you're here, Ms. Jefferson, the, in participating. Yeah, so would you like me to um, state what I wrote in the chat? Please. It, it's just really just sort of a comment and, and kind of figuring out how this is all going to work. But um, when we're going door to door, I'm guessing that, you know, the first question that people are going to ask is how are these bond initiatives paid for and how is it going to impact their family um, income? Because right now we're, you know, there's quite a struggle. So are we going to have some solid and um, good information in regards to those types of questions as well? Thanks, Stephanie, for that question. Um, I know that that information was included in the general obligation bonds presentation that Rick Tatter did. Um, Rick, could you touch on, was that covered in the video, um, the impact of the secondary property tax to a homeowner? And then I think there was another calculation um, for how it would impact a commercial business. Um, was that information covered in the geo bond video or is that still just available on our website? Uh, good afternoon. Um, we have the presentation available uh, with the bond committee work, but no, we didn't go into that level of detail in the video that we put together. Uh, we just hit the high points uh, going through that. Uh, a small touch on the secondary property property tax rate and a little bit about the capacity uh, for the city of Flagstaff, uh, but not the impacts to residential and commercial at this time. So Stephanie, um, I'm writing down a note because I think it's certainly something uh, that we can make sure that we're pulling out for that roadshow process as well. Um, mm -hmm. is the impact to residents of that secondary property tax because yeah. then we have an opportunity to explain it and kind of how it works. Yes, that would be uh, helpful, especially for our times right now. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of people yeah. struggling, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, thank you, Miss uh, Jefferson uh, for bringing that up. Uh, before I get to Mr. Ghetto, one of the committee members, I see Mr. Clifton has his hand raised. Oh, thanks. I just wanted to give a little more uh, substance to the thing on the videos, and there are two videos. The first one is uh, one that we did talking about uh, you all, um, not individually, no names, but just the committee and what the function of the committee is. The fact that council um, uh, instructed us to put together this committee uh, for the, the purposes that are being pursued right now uh, and, and those that lie ahead. 
the second video is, as Rick Tatter mentioned, a video uh, more about bonds. Uh, I watched uh, him being interviewed in that uh, video, and yes, there's a very high level, uh, uh, I think very good information at a high level about what a bond is, what the uh, property tax tier structure looks like without graphs, without uh, numbers, but just high level. Uh, and he did touch on capacity as well. Through the lens of a layperson hearing or watching that video, I, I thought it was just where it needed to be. It was explanatory, but it was not at a great depth. I, I think the in-depth discussions, uh, going back to my earlier comments, will follow. Uh, there's no doubt. Uh, and it's a very good question that was asked about impact to property tax payers. All of those things will be uh, talked at at length. Uh, I don't want to drift off into this conversation, but the, the good news um, behind the, the presentation that came your way back in January and then what is now shown on the video and what will be t touched on again and again is there is capacity. Um, there, there's capacity because the city has been uh, fairly successful in paying off debt of, of late. We've, we've retired a lot of debt, uh, which positions us well, I think, this is my opinion, to be going forward to our voters at, at this time. The, the, the timing is good, not addressing the obvious impact, uh, but there there is some, some I think, some basis that uh, would, would at least underscore this process that is occurring and why now and why these projects. I, I think it does make sense on a few levels. So I wanted to share that and thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Clifton. Um, I'm gonna get back to committee member, uh, Mr. Ghetto. Um, go ahead, thank Mr. You. Ghetto. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I just wanna go back to Stephanie's question because uh, this is something I've been really uh, hammering home. We do need to educate our community about the costs uh, of what of these bonds. Uh, I personally, um, you know, anybody could do the math. We could say 75 million, 75,000 citizens. It's $1,000 a person. Maybe the average household is three people, four people. It's 3,500 a household over, you know, as much as a 20 year period. Think about it as a mortgage the numbers are fairly reasonable, really reasonable relative to the importance of these issues. I'm not normally focused on the issues, I'm focused on the money, but I think some of these are absolute emergency situations and we just have to educate our citizens about that and I think they'll understand. Uh, my question, sorry to diverge, is this survey being conducted for just our committee benefit to influence our recommendations, to know what the community thinks, or is it going to be shared with the community? Is it going to influence city council? And finally, I just want to make sure everybody saw this week's Flagstaff Business News uh, article or uh, contribution by the mayor, where he talks about you know potentially using all 100 million in bond capacity. Um, and a couple of other important issues, I think that uh, maybe somebody could send a link to that article to everyone. Thank you. Uh, so Ron, um, the survey is being done to help this committee know what are the sentiments of our residents. Uh, we think that's important to consider um, the, what you've heard from staff, what you've heard from commission members. Um, this is really going to be an opportunity for the community to provide their feedback. Another way they can provide feedback um, is through the citizen bond uh, web page. There's actually um, feedback section at the bottom of that page, so they can certainly share information that way as well. Um, so we're going to be feeding all of this um, information to the committee members in order to help you um, know what is important um, to our neighbors, to our friends, to our family members who live here with us in the community. Um, it will uh, more than likely be shared with council as well at the time that we're making recommendations so that they know um, that this was part of the process. Uh, we've told them in the beginning that we're going to do it and so it'd be important to tell them um, this is what we heard um, and this is how it was utilized in creating this recommendation that we're presenting to them. Uh, Steve, Mary, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. 
No, Shannon, that's that's exactly right. And again, uh, I appreciate all of the questions regarding the survey, but please understand that the survey is really just one piece of a puzzle that we are putting together to to go through the process of of putting the measures in front of the public and hopefully having them them approved. Uh, one of the things that the committee is going to have to grapple with uh, in making their recommendations is that. If you add up all of the projects that have been uh, recommended by staff, they're well in excess of the amount of, of, of money that will be available uh, in terms of uh, our ability uh, to, uh, to bond. And so uh, the, one of the deliverables from the committee is going to be a listing of each of the projects in each of the categories with a kind of a line drawn as which ones are being recommended for the bond package and then the others listed in priority order as well. This survey is designed to assist you in making those judgments as to what the priorities will look like based on the fact that the public has given you some idea of which projects they believe are more or less important. And so it is primarily there for your use in your deliberations even though it will be part of the record and be available to others. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Vice Chair White, I see you still had your hand raised. Did you have another question or a comment? No, I didn't lower it after the last one. Um, <laughs> I'm ready to move on, thanks. Okay, um, I just have, uh, just a kind of a quick question. Uh, I heard, um, you know, this is going to be a, available to the residents here in Flagstaff uh, electronically, and there was also be a, a page or paper form um, at our two libraries. Are two libraries uh, fully open as if they were pre-pandemic? That's one question I have. Uh, so. Chair Odegaard, um, they are not open to full hours, but they've been adding hours um, since the uh, number of COVID cases, hospitalizations and related deaths have been decreasing. Um, I certainly can, um, I don't have those top of mind because they've been evolving. Um, so let me write that down and I can get that information to this group about the library hours. The things, the thing that I like about it is it does have evening and weekends available. And so I think that's helpful um, for folks that are working. It provides that flexibility, um, but we'll get you those libraries so you know exactly what they are. And then that was my thought, you know, I was trying to make it um, as accessible as possible to our residents. And, and of course, as you just mentioned, evenings and weekends uh, work uh, well for a lot of the residents who have to work uh, full time. Um, and then is there any other way that the survey is going to be going out other than uh, in electronic uh, format? And, and how is residents going to find out about this electronic format to participate? also so we will be mailing a postcard um, to every resident uh, within the city flagstaff limits uh, we will be uh, sharing this information via social media um, we will have uh, print ads uh, and we will also be adding this information to our citizen bond committee web page as well okay uh, thank you miss anderson um it maybe i don't know if the postcard is done, the ink is dry. Um, maybe there could be a thought that, uh, especially uh, for our more at risk uh, residents um, that, you know, are still kind of sheltering in place and maybe are, are elderly that, you know, are, are not very mobile as for a way that if they um, return that postcard and said, could you mail me a, 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 a form? Um, that they could still fill out and send back. I don't know if that's possible at this point in the game or not, but I just thought it'd be convenient, especially um, many residents are, you know, um, you know, still at risk residents concerning COVID and of course our elderly population. We certainly can follow up to see if that's an opportunity. 
Um, we were somewhat limited to the process that we could use for the survey just to make sure that we had enough time still left in our timeline before we go back to council to be able to do some of that roadshow. Um, we did look at mailing out a survey um, and unfortunately that would have eaten up the majority if not all of our roadshow time and we really felt that that was also an important component of sharing information with our community members and being able to actually explain things um, in face to face or virtual settings. Um, so we will talk about that uh, chair Odegaard to see if it's possible. Uh, within the timeline, um, I, I know many of us would be willing, you know, to drive a paper copy over or walk a paper copy over, depending where we are. Um, but let's see how we can make that happen. Thanks okay. for that feedback. All right. No, thank you. And anybody, other committee members have a question or comment they'd like to make me before we move on. And I'm not seeing anything at the moment, so let's uh, go on to the next item. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. So I'm going to stop sharing that. Um, our next item is going over the recommendations. Um, I'm going to share the document, but our new point team uh, is actually going to uh, walk us through it. Let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see the font easily. Greetings all, uh, I'm Meredith Ford. I'm the Senior Account Manager uh, with New Point Marketing, and it's my pleasure to be with you today to talk with you about your specific journey. Now that you've gathered all of the information, how do we move forward? So uh, the first part of your timeline really corresponds with what you've heard in terms of surveying the community. We will begin with surveying you. You will receive the same survey in the same format as the community will with the exception of some of those voting and demographic information, those sections two, six, and seven. We wanna make sure that you have the opportunity to focus on the meat, if you will, of the survey, which is your prioritizations, your feelings of importance regarding the various potential bond packages and their individual projects. That survey will be available to you beginning Thursday, March 17th, which again is the same date that the community survey will open. You will have a separate link that it will be private just to you, and you will have one week to complete that survey through the 24th. The community survey, as a reminder, is open for two weeks. We then, uh, while you are experiencing your uh, tours of the plants, will be gathering the data and providing you with results at that first meeting in April, on April 7th. Again, we will be able to share with you the information that we've received from the survey. And we'll use that to begin working through the process led by Steve Lynn to illustrate where the projects are falling in ranking order. Not saying I'm more interested in A versus B, but saying as a group, this is where the broad bond packages, uh, bond measures are falling. Then we'll look at within each of those broad categories, how the projects rate in terms of importance. And we'll use that information to, as Steve has indicated, look at those funding levels. And if we took everything that was noted as most important, where does that look like in terms of our bond capacity? Then shortly after that meeting, the following week, April 14th, we will have the responses from the community survey to share with you. And at the next week's meeting, beginning on April 21st, you will have the opportunity to compare your original feelings and thoughts with that of the survey from the community and begin to adjust your recommendations. How does what we've heard from the community in terms of importance and projects affect your personal feelings? It's within this two week time frame between that April 21st and May 5th that, as Shannon has explained, it's really an opportunity for you to guide us on how often and frequently and for what length of time you feel meetings are appropriate to make sure that we can come to a place of decision or, or um, you know, maybe not unanimous, but certainly a, a good majority so that we can have a list of final recommendations for you by May 5th. I want to note that during that two week time frame, April 21st through May 5th, the roadshow 
will also be happening. So I suspect that that will be opportunities to share anecdotal feedback that's been received while you're participating and hearing face to face from uh, folks in the community. The goal is on that uh, May 5th to really at the conclusion of that meeting come to a space where everyone is very comfortable and aware of what that recommendation look like, looks like. So that at the final meeting, May 12th, we will be able to present to you in a very clear form what the recommended package is and this committee will have the opportunity to vote and approve. I open it for, for questions and, and in uh, Shannon's spirit, I, I may will likely be calling on friends to, to uh, respond to certain questions. Meredith, I might add just one one uh, piece to this. Yes, please. The the, the methodology that that uh, that Meredith just outlined, uh, if you think of it uh, very much like what a jury goes through when they start deliberations, we have to start somewhere, and and oftentimes what a jury will do is take a straw vote at the beginning of deliberations just to see where they are as a beginning point. And that's what we hope that will happen when we get your surveys back, that you will have collectively been able to take a look at the at, at your fellow committee members and where they stand on the on the relative values of the project. That'll begin the discussion. And then when we add the community survey results to it, it'll give you another point of view to add to your deliberations to move priorities around within the categories. The goal, obviously, is to have for the Baron Council a list of priorities in order within each of the four categories, and then a line drawn at some point in each of the four categories, which represents the relative amount of money that you're recommending to the Baron Council be included in the bond package. So that's the deliverable, and that's basically how we'll get there. Um, and the April 21st to May 5th timeline uh, is open uh, for, as Shannon mentioned earlier, uh, your your deliberations and discussions as frequently as you feel is necessary and for as long as you feel is required to get to a recommendation. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I do have a hand raised uh, from our committee member, Mr. Ghetto. Thank you, Chair Odegaard. Maybe next time you should give me a coupon book. I'll limit my questions in the future. Uh, this is relative to the April 21 through May 5th uh, deliberation period. We've gotten a lot of bottom up presentations by each of the broad categories of potential bond issuance. It would be great, perhaps, if the city staff could put something top down together for us to look at that has them in aggregate and then each category by the components of those categories. And maybe even something that addresses which categories or components have an opportunity for outside funding. You know, we may get a do $4 for every dollar in some categories, but not others. So bang for the buck. So I'm hoping we can get more informed top down. With respect to our filling out the survey next week, will we rank all categories, all projects, or like the community, just the category that is most important to them? Thank you. I don't know if uh, Mr. Lynn or one the, of our other guests might be able to answer that. Yeah, the committee, as well as the public will be ranking both both the projects and the categories and so you will you will essentially do the same ranking and that will begin your discussions uh internally um so the information that you'll generate as a committee is the same information that will be coming to you from the public i i guess i misunderstood i thought the public chooses their single most important issue or category and then ranks the things within that category. So they're going to be ranking every category, then everything within the categories. That's correct. Both.
Mr. Getter, do you have a follow-up at all? No, that, that's it. Okay, just perfect. Just other recommendation that will need some help from the top down at some point. Okay. And Ron, I can maybe um, touch on that. Uh, I have created a one page document that lists everything in one page. You see it by category and then it has each of the projects within that category and then a total. Um, so I'll get that out to you. See if that I mean to the group, um, see if that meets um, at least a part of what you discussed. I think the other of identifying which projects have opportunity to leverage dollars. Um, the city is certainly uh, have been going after much of the federal dollars um, that are currently available um, for wastewater, uh, for stormwater, uh, as well as climate action, um, and I believe housing as well. And so um, if we are able to um, obtain those, we're not exactly sure when we'll find out. So that's uh, one of the things that we've been conversing with our bond legal counsel on is understanding ways in which we can be flexible in how we word um, bond measure ballot language. So it allows us that flexibility that if, if for some instance, we get $3 million from the federal government for our stormwater, that maybe it allows us to go a little bit further on our list within the dollar threshold that's been identified for that particular category. Um, so, so we're very aware that there's the ability um, to uh, include other monies in these processes. We just don't know exactly when we'll find out. So that's kind of what we're working on. Does that help answer that question? Well, if we don't vote for the category, we'll never get the money. That's that's the only thing. Uh, my understanding was if we raise a dollar in certain categories, then we can leverage more dollars. But there are some categories we don't have that opportunity. So maybe there were these are asterisks around those categories where we might be able to leverage the money. That's all. Gotcha. Thank you. Though. Thanks. Okay, uh, good point about leverage dollars. Um, Mr. Clifton, I saw your hand raised earlier. I don't know if you had anything you'd like to add. A very quick comment. Thank you, Chair, to what Shannon just uh, mentioned. This could be added on to her comment. By the time we have that period, end of April, beginning of May, we will also have some benefit of seeing how our budget is proceeding, our budget uh, process uh, goes all the way up until June and frankly ends with with uh, ordinance by the end of June, sometimes early July. But but our council will will be retreating twice between now and the end of April. Uh, we'll have some outcomes uh, still couched in terms of recommendations, but I think a little bit of guidance as to what's happening budgetarily. I mentioned that because there could be uh, a couple of things that that are listed in these a project list that that uh, may, if if we can pull the resources together, may see funding internally. Uh, that will give a lot of weight to what was just discussed about being able to go, go further down the list. Uh, so I think it'll help inform that discussion a little bit more. So stay tuned on things that uh, are happening with the city's budget. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. I think a great example of that is that the city's uh, been able to uh, fund a quint. Um, and so when you see those numbers, they'll be updated to remove um, just over that $2 million total. Um, so we will continue to update those numbers so that way the committee members know um, what we've been able to fund through other means. Uh, that is good news, Ms. Anderson. Um, any other uh, questions or comments by the committee? Uh, I see the vice chair um, White has his hand raised. The meetings of the um, April 21st, 28th and May 5th um, are still 4 to 530 this form, this um, this format. So vice chair White, um, that'll be the discussion that we'd like to have with this group is um, we want the committee to be able to meet on the schedule that works for them. Um, we certainly can stick with each Thursday from 4 to 530 if that's what works for you all. But um, we're our next agenda item is really to hear from you what you think you'd like to do. OK. 
All right, then we'll, that's a good segue to the next one. It is. I'm going to uh, stop sharing this screen. Okay. Um, before you move on, uh, I do have a, a question. Something to, for uh, the committee to maybe uh, just have that information, because as we just talked about for over an hour, is having good information and information to help make uh, good decisions. Uh, will we be hearing at some point uh, what other uh, partners here in the community might be thinking, asking their own questions. Um, I know uh, FUSD might be asking a question. I know Coconino County might be asking a question concerning the voters in November. Uh, not that it might change what we decide on, but just to have that information to help um, with that decision-making process. So will we hear those potential questions? Maybe, you know, not at this time, of course, but um, as we start to go a little further in the process. Uh, Chair, if I may, uh, yes, of course we will. Uh, we definitely will. Um, and I am aware of one question that I believe is uh, forthcoming from the community college. I understand that that is a May question, uh, I think by statute or something, but uh, uh, the authority of for that particular question uh, states that it occurs in May, but and our city clerk is responding to that we will have a report uh, uh, going out in June. So stay tuned on that. We definitely will be informing this group of everything that is happening in terms of ballot measures. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Clifton. Uh, so with that uh, leading in, um, I guess the how the committee as a whole um, is comfortable with the continuation of still meeting, I guess, on Thursdays and at this time slot. Is that what you're looking for, Ms. Anderson? Yes, if the committee would like to still meet once a week on Thursdays from 4 to 530, or if there's some other meeting schedule that you would like for uh, the deliberation period. Okay, thank you. And I guess um, maybe the committee members um, either could raise their hand or make comments in the chat. Um, just seems like uh, this time frame has worked pretty well for the most part. We've had pretty good uh, participation. Uh, maybe today a little lighter than normal. I think we're missing one or two members, but but we're again moving on to the spring break period, which could have had effect to that. Chair Odegaard. Uh, this is Steve Lynn. Yes, what I sir. might what I might suggest is that if if the committee is uh, is set on on this date and time, uh, what you might want to do is have that first meeting, see how much progress you make in your deliberations, and at that point, you know we could schedule uh, every Thursday for an hour and a half, but if if you feel as though you need more time, we could make an adjustment at any time during that April to May period at your discretion as to whether you need more time uh, to work on the on the, the uh, deliberations. But hopefully uh, those um, roughly six hours might be enough uh, to get you where you need to go. Okay, uh, thank you for that comment. And, and I, I agree, I think, you know, as we go along, with the timeline that we have that, um, you know, that time period during that Thursday might expand, you know, an extra half an hour, you know, I could see that um, happening over time. So with that, I think uh, it seemed like just from the chat box from um, the kid meeting members, uh, looks like it's, the time frame we're at is pretty good. But I'd like to have Mr. White, maybe he had did have a question that he might want to ask. Um, well, well, I don't, I'm not sure yet. I guess, I guess what um, I'm concerned about is, uh, is starting to try and um, come up with a method, methodology of um, eliminating some projects. And, and it's not because I think that some projects have to go. Um, but some projects will have to go and and we're not going to be able to as as Steve pointed out 
fund all of the things that are there with the, with the amount of money that's being asked for. Um, and so while a survey might help us to see where the community lies, um, I'm beginning to think that that to a certain extent um, and maybe with Shannon's list, um, we could start to X out some things. Um, but I want to see how it's put. I want to see how these things are presented to us for consideration, I guess, because um, I don't want the process of elimination to occur in the fact that the list doesn't list every project. Um, and uh, and I guess I just need to see more of what the uh, the consultants and the staff have put together for an idea um, on how to uh, begin to evaluate all of these projects. It's a big list. Uh, Chair Odegaard, just, just to respond to the vice chair, uh, I, I think you're you're absolutely right, uh, Mr. White, that that it it is probably going to be necessary for the committee to begin to eliminate projects. And my suggestion would be when you see the way your fellow committee members have listed their priorities, it'll give you some targets uh, for elimination based on the lack of priority that that even the committee uh, has determined based on their own rankings. That will give you some places to start with that discussion. And certainly that that is something that is going to have to happen. Uh, but remember that um, there are two issues here. One is there may be some projects that you don't want to recommend at all. You don't want to prioritize them in any way, shape, or form. Now, my suggestion would be that if the staff felt strongly enough to recommend them, they may very well need to be somewhere in the list. But take, for example, one of the categories where you have a variety of projects that have been requested, you will put those in a priority order when you, when you make a recommendation to the Baron Council, and you'll say, of the five projects, and I'm making up the numbers, of the five projects listed, we are recommending that the first two be funded, but the others will still be in priority order. That gives you two opportunities. One, if other funding is available, we're exploring language that would allow money to be spent on the succeeding projects if the higher priority projects are being funded from another source. The second thing it does is it, it gives the, the, the mayor and council the full benefit of those recommended projects in a priority order for them to ultimately determine what goes on the ballot and in what form. Okay, uh, thank you. And uh, Mr. Uh, Ghetto, one of the committee members had his hand raised. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chair Odegaard. Let's say we have seven, we agree 75 million in funding. That's what the city could handle. Do you put $100 million on the ballot because you know 25 million won't be voted for by the community? So we get to eat our cake, you know, as well? Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Ghetto. Um, just looking in the chat box. Oops, uh, I just lost my chat box uh, for a sec. Uh, no, that was a question, Chair Odegaard, seriously. Oh. You, I mean, knowing that some bond uh, recommendations won't be voted on at the poll, but we have $75 million in bond capacity, do you put $100 million in front of the voters, or is that too risky? Thank you. Uh, I guess I'm not sure if the uh, our consultants or maybe even city staff have seen that. Um, I guess that you know that exercise or something to that effect happened in the past. What you're asking, and is there anybody here that may be able to answer that? Well, I'll jump in. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you for the question, Mr. Ghetto, and then I would invite Rick Tatter to uh, either add to what I have to say or correct me if I misstate it. The, the, the capacity uh, of, of what could be asked for here may be a little bit different from what Council has given us some 
upfront direction as to what should be asked. In other words, uh, we had, and I think we've represented to this committee at the very get go that council indicated it did not want to maximize the capacity uh, of what may be allowable under that tier two property tax structure. Now, council reserves the right to change its mind. Uh, and if this committee was to advance a recommendation that that might suggest doing so, um, I think I think we could have that discussion and, and we'll have that discussion eventually. Uh, but it, it was not a legal. There is a capacity uh, that that exists, but council's direction was to do something less than the full amount. But it was a little bit nebulous. Um, you know, we've been using the the seventy five thousand dollar mark because that seems to be what, what was anticipated. I don't think uh, it's a definitive amount just yet. I think that conversation has yet to occur. I think it's is a guidance, if you will, um, to start the discussion. But that's my uh, take on it. <clears throat> Pardon me, uh, Rick Tatter. Do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Sure, uh, I guess one thing to add is I would never recommend putting more bonds on a ballot measure than the capacity we have to issue the debt. Uh, if we have 100,000 in capacity, I wouldn't ask for 125 million to go on a ballot measure. That I definitely wouldn't do that. Um, but yeah, council is the one that'll decide, you know, what projects and what amounts go on there. Um, but the capacity currently is $100 million uh, that we could do. And I believe I will be very successful in issuing debt and maintaining that flat property tax rate. And with that uh, rate, uh, Mr. Tatter, and then that is that $75 million um, capacity within keeping at that with, current rate. With the existing rate, we could go up to $100 million. Council direction is a little bit lower than that, um, oh, okay. but we can go up to $100 million and stay in the 0. 0.8000 rate. Okay. And then that clarifies that. Uh, I guess I guess if I can add, you know, even if we only put seventy-five million out there, we would probably maintain that point eight zero 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 rate, and just restructure the debt and maybe pay it off sooner. Maybe it's not a twenty-year debt, um, but it also position us for a future election in a year or two years from then where we build more capacity and bring other things forward. Uh, so just to add that other nuance. OK, thank you, uh, Mr. Ghetto. You have any further? No, I, I think uh, I don't know in elections what proportion of bond is, you know, bond um, proposals are typically accepted. So if on average, it's 60 percent. Uh, are voted in favor of, we wouldn't get up to our, our capacity. That's all. I just wanted to make sure we got as much money as we can and not violate our capacity based on historic voting records. Um, but I, I hear the response. Thank you. Okay. Uh, um, Mr. Clefton, before I move to Mr. Moore. Yeah, and this one's more of a commentary. The, I mentioned earlier, you know, we, we the city has been successful in paying down some debt. We, we've had some good fiscal policies in place for a long time, uh, enabling us to build uh, appropriate reserves and, and do some some things, uh, I think, th that have benefited our, our, our budget and our overall fiscal landscape. For example, two years ago, paying off the unfunded public safety pension, uh, and Mr. Odegaard was involved in that, uh, endeavor was absolutely huge. It doesn't mean we have uh, a, a big stockpile of money. It means we've been fiscally prudent and that has placed us in a favorable position. Our auditors like what we're doing. Our bond raters like what, what we have done. The comment I would also like to, to share is the, the fact that there's $100 million in capacity is also a re reflection that past councils 
past administrations uh, have enabled that to happen uh, so that we could have this discussion. If we were to, and th this I think was underlying council's suggestion that we not spend it all, if, if we were to do that, uh, we would be foreclosing future councils and, and future administrations from doing things that may quite frankly be needed. So there's fiscal prudence to not uh, spending the, the entire wad, if you will, um, but that will be a, a discussion for council to have. And I it sounds like there's already comments being made in, in that regard, but uh, we'll make sure it's a very well informed discussion when it happens. Thank you. OK, uh, thank you, Mr. Clifton. Uh, Mr. Moore. Thank you, Chair. Um, just more of an ideological question. Um, as we start to approach these decisions that we're going to be making in these discussions we're having, is our mandate to be making recommendations based on what we as committee members feel are most important or those that we feel are most wanted by the community based off of the survey results? I guess that's if they're not congruent. If we have one philosophy on what should be put in front of the voters, but the survey results say something different, um, are we are we supposed to frame it towards what the most likely to get um, approved by the voters or just strictly what we as community members, as committee members feel is the top priority? If I may weigh in on that one, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Moore, you ask a great question. And, and I think the answer, unfortunately, is going to be a little of both. Um, what the what the committee should be mindful of is the popularity of the package that they're going to recommend based on the fact that after the, the election is set and the questions to be on the ballot are determined, then a citizens committee, perhaps uh, populated by some of you as well as others, are going to have the task of advocating for the packages uh, on the ballot. So what we would like to have happen is for the committee's recommendations to be an amalgamation of your own priorities, plus anything you've been able to glean from public surveys about popularity of certain, certain items or certain areas over others. And if you take those into account uh, in your recommendations, it will make the advocacy that much easier when you get closer to the election. Again, the committee has the, uh, the ability uh, clearly to use its own judgment and make the recommendations to Baron Council for those things that it feel uh, that it feels collectively are most important. We're trying to help you uh, understand not only what the committee feels is or what the community feels is important, but also what they might be willing to vote on when they have the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And that was, again, a very great question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moore. Um, any others that might have questions? I'm not seeing anything or hand raised at this time. Um, on this uh, topic itself, I know it's uh, really uh, tough, you know, when we have to make those decisions and, 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 and everyone knows that, you know, as uh, Mr. Um, Ghetto has mentioned about eating the cake too. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I had made a suggestion here publicly um, at, at a prior meeting about uh, concerning a stormwater issue, uh, in maybe another avenue um, that really needs to be funded and how to do it, um, maybe without asking the voters themselves um, the question. So uh, with that, I'm going to always like to let uh, the vice chair um, white uh, to make any closing comments at this time. Thank you, Charlie. I appreciate it. Um, so so my past experience with uh, with bonds um, and and uh, advocacy is that uh, is that at no point in time does any um, city staff and or city hirees and or even appointed committees advocate more than educate. And uh, and so I, I want to be careful using that term. Um, the other thing I think is uh, is um, I guess um, there was a a, a, a 
person who joined late, who's M Michelle, and uh, and she asked the question about presenting to the voters as one bond issue or multiple, that some tying bond issues together has has had in the past the negative effect of killing a good bond issue based on its relationship to one that people don't want. So as in as many cases as we can, I'm going to urge us to be separate and let the voters decide with whatever gets on there. Um, we can have a set of ideas that we think is good. It gets to council. Council has a completely different idea. They are the final say, and they'll put that. They'll put those things out there. But I would never recommend that we advocate tying bond issues together. Um, and with that, I'm anxiously anticipating seeing um, this survey so that uh, so that I can get a handle on how the number of um, and I keep saying issues and I mean projects. The number of projects is uh, is going to be presented and uh, and somehow start start to be edited down. And thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, to say that. Chair Odegaard, I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Vice Chair. Um, as everyone knows, uh, we have next week off, uh, which is well deserved of this committee. Um, again, we've been meeting and discussion since right after Thanksgiving. Um, and I, again, really want to appreciate all committee members for your time with this process. I know the council has given us an important um, decision making and decision uh, on our shoulders to, to make in our judgment after seeing all the information uh, which should be um, asked in November of the voters. Um, and again, I want to thank all the staff members uh, for your time. As a reminder, uh, we will not be meeting on Zoom in two weeks from today. Um, we'll be meeting at our um, tour of city facilities concerning wastewater. And the first one, um, if I remember right, it's going to be at the Rio. Is that correct, Miss Anderson? That's correct, Chair Odegaard. Okay. And and again, I would highly recommend everybody that can participate in person of doing the tour of city facilities. Um, it's very informative, um, uh, in especially seeing on site um, to help with their decision makings. Um, and then, uh, Ms. Anderson, I know you kind of gave us a little a preview that there is kind of a like a, a chart uh, with the bond questions. Um, and kind of broken up um, to help the committee. Um, once you share that with the committee, um, I would suggest maybe uh, put a date on it because I'm sure that could change over time. As you just mentioned, uh, we um, the city was awarded uh, dollars for a quint, um, and which is wonderful news. And so, um, I guess with that, again, thanks for everybody's time. Thanks to our consultants for their time today. And I appreciate it. And everyone enjoy their spring break because when you get back, we're going to be hitting the ground running. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, everybody. Good night.